Hi, my Tubies. It's Sheila True Love here with you again. And today we're going to talk about how to choose the right woman. And what, um, after listening to what this man said, his name is R.C. Blake. And the way he described the qualities that a man should be looking for when it comes to picking the right woman, I had to listen. And I had to listen intently along with doing a checklist, check, 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 to make sure that I was measuring up as a woman and the reason that these relationships that I've been in didn't work, it had nothing to do with me. You know, after listening to this man, I really cried, you know, because all of these great qualities that I have, and I'm not being arrogant, God knows I'm not. At the same time, I have to be honest. With all these great qualities that a woman is supposed to have, I had all of these qualities. And what made me want to cry is that I had all of these qualities for all the wrong men. The men that I were with, they were not kings. They did not deserve a queen. Listen to him and tell me, when you do your checklist, does this sound like you? Um, you know, per capita, I suppose, men, uh, good men that are choosing the wrong women. And in, in Proverbs 31, where we find uh, the record of the, um, what you call her, the, the, um, Tertulous? what's the lady's name? The, what we call the woman of Proverbs 31, um, the virtuous woman. Thank you, honey. <laughs> where we find the record of the virtuous woman, you may not realize it, but it is also, um, it is also a blueprint for a man to choose the right woman. The virtuous woman is really a blueprint for a king um, to search out a queen. Because when you look at the beginning of uh, Proverbs 31, you have a queen that's teaching her young son, the prince, what he should do and shouldn't do and, and what kind of qualities he should look for uh, in a would-be spouse. So the virtuous woman of Proverbs 31 is a, is a layout of the qualities, of many of the qualities um, that should be in the character of a woman that would be a king's queen. Absolutely. And if you, if you, if you look there... Um, We'll take up probably at verse, well, let's look at verse 10. Starting at verse 10, it says, Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? Now, the first thing you, you glean from this, verse 10, as a man, relative to the woman that would be your queen, your spouse, your wife, whatever you want to call her, is that she's not going to come cheap. And this is the point that I have always been trying to stress when it came to my ex-husband. You know, anytime a man is not a good provider and he wants to be cheap and stingy with a woman, that is not a man who's a king. That is not a man who's looking for a queen. Because like he said, like R.C. Blake's, just mentioned, she's not going to come cheap. She's someone that you're going to have to make an investment in. And when I was trying to get that point across to my ex, you know, his, his thought was, well, you work. Well, you, because I work, what, what the heck does that have to do with you being a man and taking on your man role? You know what I mean? And yes, I am a queen. And, and, <laughs> And I know that I'm a queen. I already knew this. And I'm not being arrogant. God knows I'm not. But women have got to know their worth. And if more women knew their worth, they wouldn't be sitting up here putting up with all the garbage that you see these women putting up with today. I always knew, you know, from when my first met, I knew I was a queen. I am a queen. Because all the characteristics that a queen is supposed to have, he'll, he'll let you know. And it's true. I have... Every last one of them. Every last one. She's going to cost you something. She's going to cost you something. 
Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean that, uh, you know, she's going to cost you something in terms of dollars. And it does mean that at the same time, because Thank any you. woman that would be your wife should also be worthy of whatever resources you have. But did you hear that, ladies and gentlemen? She should be worthy of the resources that you have. And like he said, it's not only about the money. At the same time, she should be worthy. Show me where a man spends his money and I'll show you what he finds to be valuable. Beyond that, deeper than that, greater than that, uh, the woman that would be your wife, a woman that is wifey material, is always going to put a demand on you. She's not a woman that... Um, <laughs> She's not a woman that you can get away with and uh, just do anything you want to do and it costs you nothing. You're going to have to change some things. You're going to have to give some things up. You're going to have to rearrange some things. For the woman that would be your wife, he says, the word says, who can find a virtuous woman for a price is far above rubies? She's going to cost you something. Uh, a wife is always a high maintenance relationship. And I don't mean that in the sense of she goes to the mall and she runs up credit cards like somebody's crazy. I don't mean that. But yeah, he's absolutely right. He's not talking about a woman who's frivolous and a woman who's foolish when it comes to handling money. But what he does mean is that she's going to cost you something. Yes, she's going to hold you to a higher plane. She's going to have some demands. I don't like to demand, but yeah, she's, you're going to have that. You know, if any woman who's worth her weight or worth anything, she's going to try to help you to be the best man that you can be. And I'm so happy that I have R.C. Blake here uh, speaking because I get so tired of people saying, oh, it's just a woman's view. It's just what that's just the way women feel. No, that's not. Let's go back. But a wife always calls for a man to present his best and to give his best. Watch this. Here's even a better word to make his greatest investment. The difference between your wife and the women that you've been, you know, toying with all of your life when you were a young, foolish young man, and now you're at a place where you're mature and you, you realize what you need is that the woman that would be your wife is going to demand that you make your greatest investment. Thank you. It's true. Absolutely. She's going to cost you something. Her price, she doesn't come cheaply. Thank You're you. You're not going to get her for free. Her <laughs> price is far above rubies. It's like he said, her price. You're not going to get her for free. Like you have a lot of the women out here today. They're doing the financial heavy lifting. You know, they're paying most of the bills. And I'm not saying, you know, that, that you know, if you have a man who's not making as much money as you or whatever, that's not the point that we're making. But like R.C. Blake is saying, she, she's not going to come cheap. You're going to have to, you know, um, no. Sitting around thinking that you could sit at home and do the take care of the kids and women's work while she's out there busting her hump, bringing in the bacon. That's not her. That's not her, her role. He'll say he'll let you know. And then he goes on to say um, the heart of her husband doth does safely trust in her so that she shall have no need of spoil or that he shall have no need um, of spoil. She's going to be a woman that um, you can rely on. She's going to be a woman that you, you, you can uh, bank on. She's going to be a woman that you can trust. If, if you have a woman that you cannot trust, either there's something fundamentally wrong with her or there's something fundamentally wrong with you. <laughs> I totally agree because it's always been my motto without trust. I mean, think about it. There, there's no reason to continue because without trust in a relationship, that's just a life of hell. That's nothing but PMS, pain, misery, and suffering. And if you're with someone who you don't trust, then there is something fundamentally wrong with you. It really is. Because either, either she's not the one for you or you're not the one for her. Because any, any would-be um, marriage is based on trust. 
And the Bible says okay. the woman that would be the, the queen to the king is one that the king's heart can safely trust in her. She'll never disappoint you. Now, there are a lot of brothers that are watching this right now who have, um, sadly, but, but you've released, you know, women that uh, are the woman that you could really trust in uh, pursuing a woman of another caliber. And now you got what you wanted, but you realize you don't need what you got. And what you, what you gave up is what you really needed. A man has to have a woman that he can trust in. He has to be able to put his heart on the line and know that he can trust the woman of his choice. It's true. You have a lot of men who, instead of looking for a queen, they're looking for an ornament. An ornament. That's something you hang on a Christmas tree. That's not a, a wife. That's not a queen. You know? You have to find a, a, a quality woman. You have more men who are more concerned with how great is your, your, your blowjobs. Uh, what does your butt look like? Your breasts look like? How big are your... How, you know, they put all these emphasis on things that are not important. Because anyone who has been married for a, a, a while, they know how that sex thing, that changes up altogether. So they need to put more emphasis and focus more on, on trying to find quality opposed to quantity and ornament. I mean, come on. There comes a point when a, man ha a boy has to grow up. Come on, R.C. Blake. Continue. Then it goes on to say, um, and I, I can't go through all of them. It's, it's, I mean, if you just take your time and read through it and meditate on it, it will bless you. Proverbs uh, it 31. Says she will do him good, not evil, all the days of her life. Her heart is, he can put his heart, he can put his trust in her. She will do him good and not evil all the days, watch this, of her life. She will never do him ill. Um... Wow. Do you have a woman that <laughs> do you have a woman that's doing you good? You know, or is is this woman uh, the woman that you have now? You haven't even married her. Is she subtracting from you? Is she is she destroying you in certain areas? Is she you know, he said the Bible says she would do him good and not evil all the days of her life. He made an excellent point. When he says, is the person that you're dealing with now, are they subtracting from you? Are they helping you to be the best person or the best man that you can be? Are they adding to your life? Or are they pulling you down? Pulling you way down into the gutter? Think about these things. Listen to a man who knows. Uh, let me see. Let me jump through. She, she seeketh, verse 13, she seeketh wool and flax working willingly with her hands. She's a woman that um, will get her hands dirty. She's not, she's not uh, so bougie and so, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? She's not so- Pritzy? Um, Miss you know, Pritzy? Above this and that. She does, oh, yeah. She's not so entitled that she can't get her hands dirty. Um, she is like, verse 14, the merchant ship. She bringeth her food from afar. 15 says, she riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household. She's not a lazy woman. Hello, holla. There's nothing worse than being a king. I have been to some houses, honey. The man is paying all the rent, the utilities, the food, all the necessities, and the house looks like a tornado went through it. If it wasn't for the man cleaning up the place or the children, that house would be unbelievable. You know what I mean? A lazy woman. Proverbs chapter 31 tells you, you have to look for a woman who's a hardworking woman, a woman who has virtue. She don't sleep all around town. She's not a thought. T-H-O-T, -T, that hoe over there. <laughs> lazy. The vision and having a lazy woman. How can a person, the Bible says in, in Genesis that God created Eve because Adam needed help. How can a person help you if they're lazy? Hello. 
Holla. No man needs, no, no visionary man. Now, if you're a lazy man, it might be a great match to have a lazy woman. But no visionary man needs a lazy woman. It says, she riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household. She takes care of her family a port and a portion to her maidens. 16 says, she considereth a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hand, she planteth a vineyard. There she is again, working with her hands. But look what the Bible says. She considereth a field and she buys it. This woman has uh, even business acumen. Hello. Um, she can make business decisions. She doesn't need... Now, that is so me, honey. Business, that's like my first number one thing before becoming domesticated. I am a businesswoman. That's what I do best, you know? Um, he's he's put up, it makes it so much sense. And like I said, I had to actually, it drew me to tears. I was looking at this at my office when it was a little downtime. And I was sitting in my in my office and I was actually crying. Because these are all the qualities that I had but what made me cry is that I was putting all of this on all the wrong men. I'm a queen and I should have been with a king. A king would have appreciated such qualities. But like he says, if you're a lazy man, then of course you want a lazy woman. If you're a bum, then you want a woman who's a bum. You know? But you live and you learn. That's, that's an important thing right there. So many times as men, and this is the Manhood Academy, uh, you know, we're intimidated by strong women, but a queen, a king, a queen, a king <laughs> needs a queen. And what is a queen? A queen is nothing but a king in a dress. Hello. A queen is nothing but a king in female gender. She has the same uh, tendencies. She has the same capacity to rule and to reign, but a king cannot be intimidated by the queen's ability the Bible says she considers a field and she buys it. Now this woman, you know, you're gonna we're gonna see that she has a very important and powerful husband. But you notice how they say in Proverbs 31 that the woman she was a working woman. She worked, but this husband he still maintained the household. What did she do with the money? As noted in 31, she took that money and she bought property. She bought land. In order to buy property or buy land, she had to be taking the money that she works for and she had to save that. You know, she made things. She went out there in the marketplace and she sold it and she made dollars. In order to buy land, she wasn't making enough money in one shot. No, she had to let that money accumulate and she had to save the money. And she invested that money very wisely. A queen, she is wise. At the same time, she's free to make business decisions. Now, I believe her husband is trusting her to make business decisions because his heart can safely trust in her. That's right. He can trust her judgment. He can trust her character. He can trust her choices because he's chosen the right woman. So 16 says she considers a field and she buys it. And with the fruit of her hand, she planted a, vi planted a vineyard with her own hands. She doesn't only buy the field, but she makes the field flourish. She makes the field prosperous with her own hands. Hard worker. Hard worker. 17 says she girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. The right woman is a strong woman. She's strong um, emotionally. She's strong spiritually. That's right. Um, she's a strong woman. She may not necessarily be the strongest uh, physically. Yeah, she may not be strong physically because when it comes to a man's strength and a woman's strength, of course the woman, she's, there's no comparison. Of course the man is stronger. But like he said, she's mentally strong. She's emotionally strong. She's not sitting around here taking offense, being overly sensitive and every little thing hurts you and I don't like the way you talk to me. Overly sensitive. That's not a queen. That's not a queen. A queen is spiritually, mentally, emotionally strong. She has to be. 
but emotionally, intellectually, spiritually, she's a strong woman. She's not a weak woman. She's not a woman that's intimidated, um, you know, because if, if a woman is going to qualify, if you're a king, if you're a king, if you're a man that's maximizing and dominating in life, that qualifies you to be a king. If you're a king, the last thing you need is a woman that's weak and uh, overly emotional and intimidated. The woman you need has to be a strong woman. When the winds of life begin to blow That's and right. adversity arises, she has to be a woman that can hold you down, uh, you know, without breaking. Because sometimes as men, listen to me now, sometimes as men, we have to retreat from the world and we have to, we have to return into the safety of our own cave where our women live. And our women sometimes have to be the ones that nurse us back to strength when the world doesn't even realize that we're broken. I, I agree with this man 100%. There are times when the king gets tired. He has to resort to the cave, if you will, if you're going to take it that far back. And yes, he has to have a strong woman who's not intimidated, who's not going to sit up here and be taking offense when someone says something to them and they're crazy and they get all emotional and all of this. Uh, no. Like he said, a queen is nothing more than a king with, I don't know, who's, who's feminine, with a dress on. <laughs> she is a king. When her man is down, her king is down, and he needs to resort to, to gather his thoughts, he have got to have a queen who knows how to step up and handle things. She has to be mentally, uh, emotionally, spiritually, and intellectually, yeah, equipped. Not a thought. A thought is not going to do that. Not an ornament. That's not going to do that. What good does that serve you? So your woman has to be strong enough to be able to pick you up, man, when you, when you, when, you know, life has gotten the best of you. Yeah, I and, agree. And, and, and maybe you're not at your best, but you got a woman on your side that... That got on, you. Man. You know, you got to have a strong woman. You don't want a weak woman. You don't just want a woman that's looking good and popping gum and, and emotionally fragile and weak and <laughs> no sense of self-identity and intimidated by every little thing, every wind that blows and all that kind of thing. You know, there she's gone. You've you got to have a strong woman. And you don't need no woman who constantly needs outside validation, a.k.a. attention. I need attention. I need constant attention. Uh, when these women talking about they need all this attention, that's just another way of saying I need validation. Am I worth anything? Am I good enough? Am I this? Am I that? No, you don't need. A king does not need a woman like that. He needs a woman who's self-assured. She knows what she's all about. She knows. Baby. <laughs> in verse 18 says she perceiveth that her merchandise is good and a candle goeth not out by night speaking again a candle not going out speak it speaks again to her uh, diligence and uh, you know she's not a lazy woman but That's it says right. she perceived that her merchandise is good she knows within herself see this woman is um is self-assured she Hello. knows within herself that what she brings to the oh. table. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better. I didn't want to sound arrogant, but he said it for me. She's self-assured. She's not arrogant or haughty or think it's all about her. She's self-assured. She knows what she's bringing to the table. She knows her value and she knows her worth. That's the identifying mark of a queen. Oh is a value yes so she, you know this kind of woman to a to a lesser man to a, to a man that doesn't qualify may come across as um an arrogant conceited woman <laughs> it's amazing how he's just sitting here backing up everything that i'm saying to a man who's not a king a a, a woman like a, that's a queen. That's queen material. She comes across as arrogant. She comes across as uh, demanding. She comes across as she's too strong. You know, that, 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 that character that you're dealing with, that's not a king. That's not a king, honey. 
pretty much to a boy, a child. Reality is she's just a confident, self-assured woman. She knows what she's working with, Nikki. Thank she you. She knows that what she's working with oh. is uh, of the highest value. That's right. So because she perceives that her merchandise is good, watch this. She does not allow anybody to down downsize or um, slash her prices. That's what I'm trying to say. I sat up here and I dealt with two marriages where they tried to slash my prices. And uh, no, like I said, I admire women more when they've had numerous marriages opposed to a woman talking about she's been married for 20, 30, 40. No, not feeling you. Because a queen is not going to put up with abuse and poor treatment. She's not going to sit up here and downplay herself. When someone's not treating her properly, they, she's going to do what I do. I dead you. I dead you. Why? Because I'm a queen. And I'm not going to let no one, no one devalue me or treat me poorly. No queen would. She's going to get what she deserves and work and is worth. Got she demands right. it, in fact, because she knows that her, she knows that what she's bringing to the table is good. Thank you. And verse 19 says, she lay her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distaff. Again, you see that she's hands on and any real visionary, uh, my brother said, I need her. I, I need, I know you do, brother. I got one. You need one in your life. I promise you. Big, big thighs and pretty eyes and long hair and uh, wide hips and small waist. All oh, that's beautiful. I ain't got no problem with that. But when you get in the middle of life and you fighting for vision and you trying to make some things happen and life happens, you got to have you got to have the right woman. You don't want to be a king sitting on a throne and and the kingdom is in in war and you don't have a queen that's strong enough to leave uh, on the throne to run the kingdom until you get back. That's right. Hello, brother. And a lot of brothers are choosing women that are, are nothing more than ornaments. You don't need an ornament. This is not a Christmas tree we're trying to produce here. You need a queen. Thank you. You need a queen. Every man needs a queen. Now, if you ain't no man, you don't need what I'm talking about. There you have it. If you're not a man, you're not looking for a strong woman. You're not looking for a queen. You're still a child. You're still a boy. You know what I'm saying? I, and I'm so happy that he's saying it opposed to me saying it because everybody will be there. Now, that's you. That's just how you feel. That's just you. No. He's not the only one who I have spoken to who have the same, the same outlook. You see, because I've had a chance to speak with kings. All these other people out here, if you are, are, are suddenly for less or, 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 or not... Uh, being a Proverbs 31 type of woman, then you have not met the king. You haven't met a king. You've met boys. You've met pimps. You've met players. You know, children. A queen, she wants a king. And that's why I will not settle for less. I'd rather rule my throne alone before I sit around here and let someone devalue me. That's not happening. Now watch this here. Watch this. Um, and then the Bible says in uh, verse 20, she stretcheth out her hand, and I'm reading from Proverbs 31. Yeah. It says in, in uh, verse 20, she stretcheth out her hand to the poor, yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. Now that's interesting, because watch this. Though this woman is so powerful and resourceful, and though she has so much, and she's married to um, a king, yes. you know, a, a powerful man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she yet has compassion on the poor. You need a woman with heart. Of course. Absolutely. You need a woman with heart. You don't need a woman that's entitled. Um, you need a woman with heart. And when he says heart, he absolutely means a woman who has empathy. She knows how to put herself in the other person who is uh, less fortunate than the other folk. You see people out there who may be struggling and need help. You know, a, a queen, she knows exactly how to handle that situation as well. Believe me. You need a woman with heart. 
A woman that uh, does not see herself as more important, but a woman that can watch this. She can dine with kings and queens and then at the same time hang out with those that are in the gutter. That's right, baby. And That's hang what out I'm with them about. so as to be able to pick them up and pull them up out of it. You don't need a woman that's walking around with her nose in the air. You need a woman whose feet are firmly on the ground. And if anybody understands how to do that, God knows I do. Even though I live in a really prestigious part of town right now, thank God for that, work myself up, but I came from Harlem. I came from the gutter. So I understand how those people feel and I understand their struggle. So when it comes to putting your nose all up and you two uppity up, no, no. Like he said, she has to know how to dine with kings and queens and she also knows has to know how to hang out with people who are not doing so well in the gutter, if you will. She has to know how to do that. That's a queen. She stretches out her hand to the poor, yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. Verse 21 says, she is, um, uh, verse 21 says, she is not afraid of the snow uh, for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She's prepared, she's prepared, read this in the Amplified or some, um, you know, version that's more, um, Modern, <laughs> you know, I just read the King James Version, I guess, because I'm old school. Uh, where did I leave off? To? She's not afraid of the snow for her household. For all her household are clothed with scarlet. Uh, she's not afraid of changing seasons. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Now we get into some of the things that, um, you know, are important. But this is where most brothers start. The Bible's not talking about her clothing and what she's wearing. See, most brothers, most brothers start over here in 22, and you miss all of those character issues that we just read. You start with how she dressed and how she, how she's dressed and how she looks. But the beauty is that the Bible shows us all of these inequalities and these strengths in this woman. But okay. at the same time, it shows us that she takes care of herself. Absolutely. She's not a woman that's going to let herself, you know, go because she understands that her man has a need to see something visually and he should find what he's looking for in her. It says, and I agree with that also, you know, when you have women, they look all dialed up when you meet them. And then once they get married, they tend to let themselves go. I used to always ask my husband, honey, look, the size that you met me, he knows what size he met me at. I used to always ask him, do you think I'm, well, you know how women are. <laughs> I think that's one of the questions you guys hate. Do you think I'm too fat? Do you think I'm too this? Do you think I'm too that? Because if he would have told me, honey, look, love you to death, all the above, but uh, maybe you have some areas that you can work out on this or this. Believe me when I tell you, I would have been, I would have got me a personal trainer. I would have, I would have, I, honey, I would have made Beyonce look like a boy. Believe that. But my husband was always telling me, oh, no, babe, you're fine. You're just great. You're whatever. Yeah, you have to keep yourself up because we all know that a man, men are visual. They just happen to be that way. Is it right? Whatever. It's, it's regardless. They're visual. You have to keep your hair up. I know I look a little crazy right now. My hair is whatever because I uh, got from work late. I worked a little late today. And I got home and I took off everything and I forgot that I wanted to make this video and I had to. And regardless, I know how I look right now. But so what? I mean, right now, I, uh, <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm single right now. I mean, I, I'm, I'm hanging out with a couple of people, just hanging out. But if it was my husband, hmm, I always, hey, man, please. When I was married, both times, I always kept myself together. Always. 99.9% .9 of the time. The only time I wasn't up to par is if I was sick and I wasn't, you know, it was one of those days where I had an off day, which was very rare. Believe me. That she, she, you know, she makes herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. She's dressed well. Verse 23 says her husband is known in the gates 
when he sitteth among the elders of the land. I believe 22 and 23 go together. She has to dress well because she represents him. Yeah, that goes without saying. Unfortunately, I had an ex that nobody had respect for. He was in the neighborhood and it was, um, yeah, I, I always kept myself together. I know I represent him, but what he had to do was keep in mind that you represent me also. And uh, he didn't make me look too good. Being around the neighborhood, everybody, uh, no, no. I, like I said, I had to tell that because the queen, she shouldn't be uh, uh, being uh, caught up with a, a, a piper, a pupper, a simp, the town simp. No, 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 no. Had to dead that. Queen needs a king. The greatest represent, representation of a man uh, from a social perspective is the way his wife and his children look. So she's not a woman that's going to let herself go. That's right. And run up and down the streets of the, the, the city looking any kind of way because she understands that she represents a great man. Her husband is known in the gates. That means he's sitting among those who are in power. The gates speak of power. My husband wasn't sitting in the gates of power. Ha! No. But I, I understand the point that he's making and he's absolutely right. You know, that would be ha! Washington, D.C., City Hall. Yeah. The capital. Her yeah. husband is known where, where the power brokers are. So she makes herself representative of the man she represents. That's right. Verse 24, she make it fine linen and selleth it. There we see she's in business. She's in the business of what? She's a, she's a capitalist. She's in the business of making money. Cheddar. And delivering girdles oh, unto yeah. the merchant. She's doing business. She's a hard Strength worker. Strength and honor are her clothing. This woman is clothed with strength and honor. You're not going to... I wish you guys could see me in my tubies. Ask anyone who knows me, is she the true love? A businesswoman? Honey, please. That's my whole identity. Business. Be able to play with this woman. So you need to marry, you need to marry an, a strong, honorable woman. That's right. There's a strength that a woman can possess. That when she goes out into the street, men won't even play with her because they can discern the, the, the strength and the honor in her. She's not a loose, silly woman that's toyed with. She look at my face, darling. Do I look like the type of woman that you would play with? I've had men who were trying to get my attention and they've gotten to went to the point extreme where they would even grab me by my arm. And did I handle that situation like a queen? Absolutely. Yes, I did. Excuse me. No, better yet, excuse you. No, you don't put your hand on me, sweetheart. Obviously, if you was trying to get my attention and I was not responding, let's see now, can we put two and two together here? What does that tell you? You look at my demeanor and look at the way I speak. Do I strike you as a type of woman that you would just talk to any old kind of way or... Uh, think you can play with? Trust me, darling, that's... <laughs> no. <laughs> Trust and believe. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom. That's me, honey. I think every brother should read Proverbs 31 before he, you know, in, even begins to think about a woman. She openeth her mouth with wisdom. Now, right there, verse 26 would disqualify most of the women most brothers are dealing with. <laughs> he ain't never lied, honey. That's what's up. That's what's up. Most of these females out here don't speak with wisdom. They don't have any common sense. They are as, 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 oh, please. No. A queen, she, she's careful. She thinks things through. See me, I tend to think at lightning speed. And I have to be careful of that because everybody else needs time to process stuff. Well, take some time to process. I've already got that down pat. And But the thing is, the point is, when the Bible speaks of wisdom, it always uses wisdom in the female form. It always says she and wisdom and, and, and puts it in a, a, a female form. Pick up the Bible. Check it out for yourself. Anytime the Bible is speaking of wisdom, it's always in a female or she, 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 she. But these females that I've been talking to out here and I've been listening to lately, uh, no. 
Wisdom. Do they even have a clue? In the opening mouth, foolishness pours out. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. You look at all of these reality shows. Yeah. Look at these women, man. Listen to the stuff these women talk. Look at the foolish talk they, they, they put out. Look at the language they use. Whoever saw, you know, women using the kind of language these women are using on television today. Look at the young women running up and down the street. Listen to the language they use. Yeah. Ma'am, oh, the woman that will qualify to be your queen, when she opens her mouth, she opens her mouth with wisdom. Hello. That's what's up. Wisdom. That's what's up. And then look what it says. Um, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She's not a woman that's just running off at the mouth and hurting people with her words. She's, she, she's a woman who, who opens her mouth with wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. She doesn't use her words to make people feel bad. Okay. I'm not perfect. <laughs> just <laughs> I have got to keep it real with you guys. My two bees, I love you to death. I do. And, and there are times when my words can cut like a knife. And um, I God knows that I am definitely working on that one. I do speak with wisdom at the same time. I can be incredibly facetious, uh, sarcastic. Um, <laughs> wow. You know, yeah, I, that's definitely an area I have to work on. And I'm, I'm so glad that um, R.C. Blake brought that up. You know, see, and I'm humble enough because I hold my head down. I should not be sitting around saying things that can be hurtful because that's so not cool. That's not what's up. And I would suggest this to any any man. If you have a woman that uses her words to tear you down, she is certainly not your wife. Hold up. <laughs> hold up. I don't use words to tear my partner down. Okay. Um, the only time I will, will, will be kind of crude to my a partner is if I said things to you three times. I always do things in three, three strikes you're out. I said it to you nicely. The first time is a statement. The second time is a reminder. The third time, it seems like you, you're causing me to become a nag and now I'm going to have to, um, but yet I have been crude. God, I'm guilty. I can't believe this. But I, but I do build him up. 95% of the time, I build my man up. I encourage them. Always. But then there's that 5%. That 5% when I'm off. And, I, and I, the thing is, is I know it. Am I ashamed? Yeah, actually I am. The way he puts it and everything, yeah, I am ashamed. Your, your, your would-be wife is a woman that speaks wisely. Sometimes they open their mouth and they show their lack of ma maturity. So far away from me, I can't see it. You are correct. Your would-be wife is not going to tear you down when she opens her mouth. When she opens her mouth, wisdom is going to come out. You may not all... Nine times out of ten, Dolly, I assure you, wisdom. Wisdom is, yeah, things that are useful, things that are, are, are um, intelligent, Things that are um, wisdom. It's going to help make your life better. It's the wise thing to do. You know, and I'm guilty. And I, God, I can't believe I have this heavy duty guilt. So I messed up. Yeah, I do. You know, and when I think about it, I have been kind of crude with my mouth only because I felt that I was provoked. But the thing is, instead of me sitting around here making excuses for it, just let me apologize, you know. I know that that behavior was wrong. I know it's wrong. And like I say, oh, please just forgive me. And, 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 and I'm so sorry because that behavior is so not acceptable. That's what a wife has to have to do. A queen. If she's a queen. And that's one thing that I was good at. See? I got a thumbs up. I was always good at apologizing. Coming back to, to let them know that my behavior was not appropriate. It was totally unacceptable. And I asked them for forgiveness. And I'm the type of person who I don't accept sorry. That's just so not good enough for me. You have to make it up to me. So anytime I apologize, I ask him, what can I do to make it up to you? And whatever he asks of me, I do it. As long as it's nothing crazy and it's within reason. 
So I do more than apologize. I make it up to you. Please agree with what she's saying. But when you pause and you stop and think about it, many days you'll say, hmm, that girl is right. That's, that's some wise stuff she put out there. But in her tongue is the law of kindness. She's mm. always trying to build you up. She's always trying to make you, she's always taking people, man, those that would feel like they're less than. She brings them into her circle and she makes them feel like they are equal. Because Okay, that part I'm good at. I always know how to bring people into my circle and I'm one hell of a hostess. I know how to make everyone feel, uh, uh, really. I do things that's best for everyone, not just for me or, or no. I do everything that's best for everyone as a queen knows how to. She's skilled enough to know how to do that. There's just times when I've been with my partner. I'm not talking about other people. Of course, you should never treat other people better than you treat your partner, really. Especially when you're dealing with a king. But I never had a king. Maybe that's why I came across so rudely. I've never been with a king. I've always had paupers. Paupers. <laughs> Simps. Maybe that could be it. Am I trying to justify my poor behavior? Maybe just a little, but it's just so not justified. Uh, yeah, I know how to bring people who feel maybe lowly, and I know how to make them feel. We're all equal anyway, as far as I'm concerned, because every each human being can teach each other something. We can all teach each other something. So no one is greater than the other. Not really. She's a queen. It's a queen sit on the throne to make everybody around them feel... Uh, you know, uh, as though this is your throne. They they bring, they include everybody. But That's right. When you have a woman that lacks these qualities, you can tell by the, by the, by the moment she opens her mouth. And I suggest to any man, listen to what a woman is saying. Her words and the way she says them is the it is the the truest portrait of her heart. Don't get carried away with how fine she is. Don't get carried away with that. If she opens her mouth and there's a whole lot of stupid stuff come out and she's cussing and she's she's bitter and angry, look at how she handles. Watch this. This is for the brothers. Look at how she handles waitresses and waiters. If she talks down and abuses those that are serving her, you, you don't want to go too far with her. Well, my waiters and my waitresses always love me because personally, I think they're amazing, especially when they're, uh, they, they give you service with a smile. I've never been to a restaurant yet where the waiter or the waitress was not, I didn't have them laughing or we weren't laughing together. It's always been fun, you know? Hey, that's what's up. <laughs> you don't want to go too far with her. She'll misrepresent you in the future. And verse 27 says, she looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. There it is again. It talks about how she's not a lazy woman. There you go. But she looks well to the ways of her household. With everything that's going on in her life, buying and selling, taking care of the poor, running staffs, and all that kind of thing, the Bible says she looks well to the ways of her household. That's powerful. It means what? This is a woman of priorities and balance. No matter what she has going on, she's going to take care of her household because her what? Household is the foundation of everything. Hello, I could not have said that better. And in order for a woman to do that, she has to be well what? She has to be well organized. <clears throat> Organization, again, that's my middle name. Before I step outside in terms of business, believe me, before I go anywhere, my household is in order. My husband was well taken care of, tucked away in bed or well on his way to work, set up, everything done. Everything is organized. I'm an organized person. Can't help that. I just figured if you keep things organized, it makes everything easier. It just makes things easier. And in order to run a household um, efficiently, you have to be organized. That's a queen. She's not going to let her household fall apart, trying to do this or trying to do that. No, 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 no. She's going she's gonna to take care of her household. Got that right. Her children, verse 28, rise up 
and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Verse 31 says, give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. So, you know, this is the kind of uh, Proverbs 31 is, um, is, is the kind of woman that a king should choose to sit on the throne next to him. If you go back to verse 1 of Proverbs 31, it says, the words of King Lemuel the prophecy that his mother taught him. What my son and what the son of my womb and what the son of my vows, give not thy strength unto women, nor the ways, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. So she's teaching her son and he's, rec he's recanting what his mom taught him. She's teaching her son how kings should live. And one of the things she's teaching him is how to choose the right woman. Absolutely. Brother, if you want to go, if you really want to go to where God has planned for you to go and predestined for you to go, you got to choose the right woman the right way. Do not choose a woman out of, from the flesh. Do not choose a woman uh, out of obligation, but choose a woman that has all of the qualities. Yeah, choose a woman... Who has the qualities of Proverbs 31. He is such an amazing man, R.C. Blake, who ha is married and he's an amazing provider for his household. You have to see his home. It's well organized. His wife is in the kitchen right now organizing things, cooking. It's, it's great. It's the way a marriage is supposed to be. The house is very uh, amazingly clean. You can eat off the floors. That is a woman who knows what's up, really. Anyway. I had to share this with you. As you see, this is longer than I usually make any video. I hardly ever like to go this long because I, I'm just not that kind of girl. Talk, 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 too much. No, but I had to share this with you and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it with you. And like I always say in my videos, you always have a choice. The choice is yours. Please choose wisely. Until next time, this is Sheila True Love. Good night, darlings.